This information is brought to you by Charles Sturt University. Hi and welcome to a, a short video on um, tutorial 9 question 2. Just trying to understand um, the concept of um, curl and divergence. So curl and divergence are, are, are differential operators you can apply to a, a vector valued function um, but they have some um, useful meanings. Um, so here what we have here is a picture of a, um, a vector field. Um, so it's done in two dimensions, um, but um, we're trying to think of curl and divergence as sitting in three. So uh, first of all, let's look at um, divergence. So what divergence is, you pick any point, so let's pick, say, uh, this point here, and you look at everything that goes in and out. So in this case, we've got a um, small arrow going in and a much bigger arrow going out. So at this particular point in time, there's more leaving than going. And so therefore we call at this point um, to have positive divergence. So the divergence of the vector field at that point in time is positive. Now if the amount of arrows going in and out the same, it's zero. If there's more going in than going out, then it'll be a negative divergence. And again, if you pick any other point here, um, you get the same sort of thing. You've got a little more going out than um, coming in, so positive divergence. Um, so the other idea is um, curl. So I mean, in terms of divergence, it's the idea is um, if this was um, water, there's more water being created at any point in time. So it was an increase of stuff. But anyway, so um, curl. Imagine a little um, a flywheel, it's a little disky sort of thing, and we want to know is what happens when we put this disk in. Does it spin or not? So it's only moves. So if you imagine this disk, it's going to to move off in this direction, but is it going to spin at the same time? So you look at the arrows around it. So looking at all the arrows around it, you can see the arrows on either side are balanced. So if there's a mismatch of the, of the size of the arrows, or even more so in opposite directions, that'll create some sort of spinning motion. So in this particular case, since the arrows on either side of my little flywheel um, are exactly balanced, then it's not going to spin at all. And so when you've got completely no spin that the curl, which is the idea of how much it rotates, is going to be equal to zero. Um, now just a few things here is that um, the divergence is a scalar, so it's just a single number, so a positive, negative or um, zero. The curl is actually a vector and in general it's the um, axis of rotation of which the rotation is about. So for uh, when you're seeing things in two dimensions, the axis of rotation is either going to be coming straight out of the page or going right in. Um, but in general, say for three-dimensional stuff, it could be um, a more a sort of vector quantity. So therefore, I put a little squiggle underneath it, say it's a zero vector. So let's have a look at another one. This is a, another vector field. So again, let's try the, the curl first. So if we put a little flywheel in here. You can see the arrows at the top are smaller than the arrows at the bottom. So as it's, I mean, it's only going to, so certainly the disk is going to go that direction. But what else we'll see is that because the top arrow is bigger, you'll actually spin around in the process. So it's going to curl around. So therefore, there is going to be some curl. So the next thing is, well, what's the axis of rotation? So it's rotating about some axis that's coming right out of the page. But is it going in or out? So how do you know the orientation? So the, the basic way of doing it is you get your right hand. So we use the right hand sort of rule. And you let your fingers follow the same direction. So this is my fingers here, so this is the palm of my hand. This is my four fingers curling around. And then then the direction of your thumb, so my thumb, um, so which is in this case into the page. So the direction of your thumb actually points the direction of the axis. So um, then in this case it's going into the page. So as you follow the arrows around with your f the fingers, the direction of your thumb points the direction of the curl, which is into the page. And so the, get the right colour. So the curl is into the page. Um, and so therefore, that basically, that's going to be um, equal to the negative 
k direction. Um, you know, and we should put some sort of mystery constant here. So it'd be negative going into the page. The magnitude is not quite clear um, at any point in time, um, just from my picture. So if you wanted to work things out accurately, then the the vector function here is something like um, so y minus two i something along those forms, so you know, y minus something rather, to scale it up, um, to push it up. Um, and if you take, if you took the curl of this particular vector, it is the one I gave you, you'd get exactly minus k. So if it was minus you know, 2y minus 2, then you'd get um, minus 2k, etc. But we certainly get some curl, so you get some spinning motion. If you look at um, divergence, so again, let's pick any point here, um, the amount of error going in the amount of going out of this particular point exactly balanced. So there's no net gain or loss, so that a divergence of this particular vector field, and again, pick any point you want to at all, is going to be equal to the zero, make equal zero. That's just to give you an idea. So curl is other in useful. So curl has certainly got a sense of how um, non so for a vector for a force, um, sorry for for a force. The curl of the force corresponds to how um, not conservative the vector is. So if the curl is zero, it is conservative, which means it's path independent, etc. So therefore, no work, no work done on a, a closed loop. They all mean the same thing. So the the curl is how not conservative it is. Um, but I think a nice geometric understanding, which is always useful, is this idea of how much it spins. Um, so although we use you're still going to use the calculations a lot. It's useful to understand that to see how it plays out in the bigger theorems like divergence theorem and Stokes theorem, of which we see both of these concepts crop up later. So I hope that helps.